All right, so what we're going to do is you can use any EEPROM, EEPROM that's embedded inside your Arduino. You can use the EEPROM on a chip. You can use uh, EEPROM on the, the RTC module. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create strings, um, sentences of data. Uh, you take multiple variables, and let's say you have five or six uh, analog values and you want to create one sentence or string uh, you can uh, make a block and feed them into it and use that to identify let's say gyroscope centers uh, off mapping offsets for your remote control your zero centerings um, all this information in the EEPROM you can save it as a default as a fail safe uh, or you can use it actually to uh, share between two Arduinos or multiple devices uh, on down the I2C string so they can use the same sentence of information uh, so they have the same information to work with and you don't have to directly connect anything between the actual Arduinos uh, which is my entire scope of this this is why I'm doing this is because it's the QC series has two brains in it uh, and I didn't want to base all the EEPROM values inside of one of the Arduinos and take the clock time. So uh, I decided to set it on the I2C bus. Let me get into this and show you how to create a packet string. Number one, output values. Number two, how to save them. Uh, how to update the EEPROM. Uh, and things of this nature using Visuino. setup is simple all you need is the RTC module hooked up to the I2C bus uh, get yourself a gyro whether it be I2C or analog like this one and then you need a 10k potentiometer to adjust the uh, input going to the final analog pin that it uses to do its calculation and update the EEPROM Now your values you need to create for your EEPROM are controlled by three clocks. One to start, one every 20 seconds, and one every five seconds. Your first two analog values are your minimum and maximum for your input mappings. Second two are your minimum and maximum for your output mappings. And then the fifth one is for the input from the variable uh, potentiometer. So your EEPROM feeds every 20, uh, 20 times a second over to the remap. So then the remap with all of the sync pins enabled uses those variables from the EEPROM to output uh, to the text window. Now it also outputs from there over to the ADXL gyroscope. Uh, the ADXL uses that fifth value, the saved value, uh, coming out of it, the Excel to angle is set to normalize, zero to one ratio, um, and then the that feeds over to the add boxes, and then the inverters, it uses the one signal to invert, and then it adds the two together, uh, gives you your offset the variable updates in the EEPROM and it cycles over again through the remap out the text window gives all six of your values and so on and so on and so on now you don't have to do this uh, you don't have to update the EEPROM every five seconds like I am I'm just giving you like on an example here uh, you can see the line, the blue line there jumping. That's when the uh, trigger for the EEPROM update is given. The other values are the input, uh, the raw input, and then the corrected output. All right, moving on to the full size graph here. You can see the blue is the EEPROM saved off that offset. The red is the raw input. Green is the remap. 
and then the yellow, purple, and gray are the adjusted gyroscope outputs. Now, the, you can change these with by changing the uh, minimum and maximum uh, components inside the EEPROM when it first starts up. You can change those variables in bigger or smaller. Uh, now, every, I have it timed that every five seconds or I don't know, maybe two seconds, I don't even care. Uh, the gyro offsets are updated using the saved input so it takes that value and saves it to EEPROM so that next time you start the robot up it saves that value. Uh, you don't lose it, you keep it and you can use it elsewhere also. Different Arduino can borrow it. Now obviously the goal is to be able to have a button and a variable potentiometer on the robot somewhere where you can use them to set your X, Y offsets, uh, your mappings, and you can also make it auto learn so that every five minutes or so it will check and see if the center has changed. So hopefully this little instruct this little video helps uh, you get the kind of the grasp on how EEPROM works uh, how you can structure it how you can use variables different ways you can update them different ways you can change them uh, you can auto update you can uh, take those variables and use them on something else and then using that input from a feedback update those automatically over time to make sure that you know the 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 things actually centered you can it, it'll actually stand there and balance itself now wouldn't that be cool so this works for all kinds of memory needs uh, radio control has to be added in we need all the variables for those mappings we have to add the uh, sonic distant ranger in uh, we have to add the safety precautions for distancing to the wall so you don't bang into it and break the thing well I already tried but it don't work so you can like it the video you can hate it you can subscribe you can not subscribe you can join my Google Plus do whatever you want I just hope you learn something because this took a little time and the next one's gonna be uh, probably five times as difficult it's gonna have five times as much information in it so look forward to it for the EEPROM series number three uh, which is the advanced use and sharing of EEPROM memory